in the last two years has been a challenge to what we know about the size principle, Henneman size principle motor unit recruitment. And there's a recent study just published, uh, I just saw it, read it today, that supported another one I had seen in 2018 to challenge the, the dogma we have about how to train the higher threshold motor units, the big fibers, especially using, and particularly using the repetition method. So let's talk a little bit about um, how this is important information. Um, and this is um, a little bit of a, um, I guess it makes me feel better about some of the things I've seen over the years that don't match this dogma we've had about um, understanding size principle winning recruitment. And I've, over the last three years, I've been, um, two years, I guess, I've been mentioning uh, this alternative idea about the size principle motor recruitment. Um, I have a video up on YouTube, um, very crude video, not, not crude and like, like not appropriate, but crude in the sense that um, I use some weight change plates to demonstrate the size principle motor recruitment um, and talked a lot about what I call tag team wrestling that occurs with repetition methods. So I wanted to talk about here uh, the, this idea again today um, because of the recent of a study uh, in the Journal of Strength Conditioning Research titled Neural Drive is Greater for High Intensity Contraction Than for Moderate Intensity Contraction is Born to Fatigue. The author was Miller, Miller et al., not this Miller, different Miller. Um, this Miller is a lot smarter than I am. And then Physiological Reports 2018, Effects of Fatiguing Submaximal High versus low torque isometric exercise, exercise and motor unit recruitment firing behavior by muddle at all. Okay. So these two studies, what they, what they're um, challenging um, just by what they found in the research literature is again, something that I've struggled with over the years when seeing people that respond differently to especially higher rep sets um, as compared to higher intensity sets. So think of like 85% of your max versus like 50% of your max, really high, uh, high repetition sets. Um, in the research literature, we see hypertrophy training can be manifest at 30% of, of 1RM. Um, but one of the questions I've had is it doesn't seem to be uniform. So somebody who's more, this is my observation, so take it as such. Somebody who's more type 2 dominant person will suffer with those higher repetition sets. I think anybody that's type 2 dominant knows that when they do that type of work. And the fatigue will overwhelm the ability to recover and to see skeletal muscle hypertrophy and certainly will, will damage the prospects or not damage, but slow um, or be detrimental to the prospects of building muscle strength and, and certainly dynamic movement, which we'll talk about in just a sec. Where somebody who's type one fiber dominant um, may see benefit from these type of sets and doing higher um, load sets, they, they may not get as much benefit and say they won't get benefit they won't get as much benefit because they don't have a lot of type two fibers as compared to the person who has type a lot of the type two fibers can lift the heavy weight. So, I mean, we kind of self-select in these things anyway. You know, if you think about Olympic style weightlifter, they're not typically a type one dominant person in a fixed uh, mixed fiber type muscle, like a quadricep muscle where um, an endurance athlete is going to, you know, self-select into something that the, the endurance fibers tend to matter. Their, their, you know, their profile and their mixed uh, fiber type muscle tend to support Okay. Um, and so finding the right training when what this leads to is finding the right training approach for you. Now we don't, this, neither one of these studies addressed hypertrophy. They weren't training studies, right? They're just mechanism studies. They're trying to figure out how the size principle of motor unit recruitment, um, actually works, uh, because the way we understand it now, I, I, I believe, which right there should raise a lot of red flags, and, and this is completely speculative, but I, I don't believe we have a complete understanding. I don't think we have an incorrect, per se, understanding, but I don't think we have a, a uh, complete. So let's get into this really quick. Um, just a quick review on dynamic maximal method. And what you're looking at here, let me back up. What you're looking at for here is force and motor unit recruitment. So the more force that's required for a movement is going to climb the um, size principle motor unit recruitment. I don't have hybrid fibers listed here. I'm just keeping it simple. So type one motor units are like your Priuses. Type two X fibers, if you have any, they can be trained out completely. Um, but type two X fibers, again, it's not taking into account the hybrid pool. Let me just make that caveat, but type two X fibers will be like the dragsters, right? They're high octane, but they don't last very long, but man, they put out a lot of power. And then our type two A's are somewhere in between They're like train dragsters. Basically you'd kind of sacrifice some of the dragster qualities, uh, but you gain some of the previous qualities. So when somebody gets in shape, that's one of the things that happens is type two X has become more like type two A's. Um, and that's just one of the things, not the only thing. So in a movement like, let's say, uh, uh, that's if I said jump as high as you can uh, and you jumped, you would hypothetically recruit all the available motor units to jump as high as you can. Now I say available, if you were fatigued, you ran 10 miles in and said jump as high as you can, you're not going to jump as high because some of these motor units have been knocked out due to fatigue. And so you can have this high neuro drive, but not really see, uh, you know, your maximal expression of power. Maximal method is, is just as it sounds, you lift heavy weight. So if we did a 1RM, 
you know, if all the available motor units would contribute to, you know, moving the bar, or that's a bench press or a back squat, whatever it is. But if you ran 10 miles and tried to do that, you'd have some of these motor units knocked out. And so you wouldn't have a full expression of your strength that you could, you could see if you weren't fatigued. Uh, and that's why dynamic, especially, especially dynamic and maximal to lesser degree is very sensitive to fatigue. I know the word very is, is subjective, but you know, you, you, you can't mix plyometric training with, with, um, you know, doing some fatiguing work and expect somebody to jump as high as they can. Okay. Now the repetition method is, is this is where the controversy is kind of being, in my opinion, it's a controversy, not in like a negative way. We're just finding out more information. Um, the repetition method says that when somebody lifts weights in a submaximal, like doing a set of 12 to failure, you might start somewhere here on the motor unit recruitment. And then as you, as you go along in your set, some of these motor units get fatigued and they get, they get knocked out. And so in order to keep the barbell moving or the dumbbell, whatever it is, you're going to have to climb up on the size principle motor unit recruitment, eventually recruiting all the available mo motor units, including the big ones. And that's, you know, that's why you have this last gasp effort and then you're done. Okay. Well, this recent research, these two studies, there's only two, and they're they're mechanistic. They're not training studies, you know, right? So just take that into account. I'm not saying this is quote unquote true or supported. I'm just saying it's something to think about, and I, it, it affirms my own kind of suspicions, but it doesn't mean I'm correct. Okay, it, but it is worth considering, I think, uh, certainly. And so with um, these two studies, have kind of affirmed this idea that if we do too low of loads. Okay, you climb the size principle and instead of just knocking out these and climbing, there's not enough neuro drive to climb up to get the big fibers. It's, these are called high threshold motor units for a reason. It takes a high neuro drive, high frequency neuro drive in order to recruit them, in order to turn them on. And so if you've been um, working for a long period of time during a set, let's say a set of 15, maybe 20, and you're cruising along here, um, these fibers are getting fatigued fairly heavily. And what they'll do is through these group... Uh, three and four afferents, and those are just nerves that go back and, and they're sensory nerves that tell the body what's going on, right? They're reporting what's going on. And so one of them is we're concerned with more of the chemical um, situation. So like, what's the pH, right? Um, you know, what's the oxygen situation in the muscle? And the other one's just like mechanical stress. So how much mechanical work is being done? And that information goes back to the computer, the brain, through the brainstem, and the brain could say, hey, look, we're getting tired right? We're, we're noticing that the, they were getting some signals back from the muscle that's saying fatigue is accruing. Neuro drive then is reduced. And if neuro drive is reduced, you cannot recruit these motor units no matter how long you linger in the set or how much to failure you go, okay? It takes a certain amount of current, if you will, to go down the pipe, so to speak, to hit these motor units. And if if that current is inhibited by the fatigue that's accruing in a long repetition set, then you will not you will not get these fibers. Now, does that mean repetition sets, you know, sets that are using submaximal methods to failure even are useless? No, you just know that you're training more of these motor units down here. And what what appears to be happening again, this is all just the beginning stages. Is this tag team wrestling idea? Is that Instead of climbing up and getting the big motor units, you don't have the neural drive to do so because of fatigue, and so you're just swapping out. This one's tired. Okay, you're in. Okay, you you work. Okay, now I'm tired. You go back in. Okay. Oh, now you're in. But eventually, all these fiber, these motor units are, are shot to the point you cannot move the load anymore. You can't accomplish the, the force output that's required, and so you fail at the set. But it was not a complete training of the the, the bigger fibers, the very large fiber, motor units. Uh, this is important. I, I've seen this like in the old hit training hit one set to failure i reviewed a book by one by 20 training by yes he's even you know points out rightly so that this great training for beginning but somebody who's a um you know a power athlete you know, like field court sport athlete is going to need to do some high velocity movements at some point um and the idea there was that uh, you know it's the way you recruit the motor units like completely you know still thinking about this dogma of um getting all the motor units but if you think about we're adding another layer saying, well, yeah, you're not going to get fast doing one by 20 to failure because you never recruit the big motor units and they don't ever learn how to play together. Right. That's the whole point, too, is, um, you know, these expressions of, of force, uh, these high force peak force type of activities, uh, these motor units have to play together. It's like, a you know, a, a sports team and you're missing one of your players. Like if this one's not there because it's fatigued, you can't really learn how to play together right it's like a symphony not having the wind instruments as part you can't make the music at least not like it's supposed to because you're missing part of the of the symphony so same thing with motor unit recruitment 
Um, and so what that means then in terms of, you know, what's the application? Well, just like I kind of alluded to earlier, um, if you are a type one person, so you're kind of a lean person has a hard time putting on muscle mass, there may be some benefit for you then because you're more type one fiber dominant and going to lower intensity, higher rep sets to failure because you're going to be able to recover from it as well. Somebody who's a larger person, in other words, who gains muscle quickly, uh, they're probably more type two fiber dominant and doing high repetition sets for that individual, you know, doing 20 rep sets, 15 rep sets, even as max, that might be something that accrues too much fatigue uh, and is not worth the stimulus. So the fatigue is masking the stimulus, the fitness fatigue model. Um, if you know, Dr. Mike Isretel, which I'm sure a lot of you do, right? He talks about that ratio of stimulus to fatigue um, for a bigger person to use higher rep sets then may not be a good idea for somebody who's more type one like a leaner person have a hard time gaining muscle mass doing the higher rep sets of failure may be something that's more appropriate so this understanding then drives better practice um and I, there's many um coaches i've seen over the years that say hey we got a bunch of lean individuals we're going to go to failure a lot with higher rep sets this would support that idea where somebody again who's a little bit bigger and more prone to gain muscle mass being very careful with the fatigue is a better idea and maybe staying in the higher intensities but um the, does that mean repetition method is wrong? No, it just means that we may not have a complete understanding of it. And that, you know, this dogma that we always get the type two, the big type two motor units every single time um, we go to failure at repeti- is, is may not be supported if fatigue wipes out neuro drive before that can happen. Okay. Um, so, you know, use your high rep sets wisely is what I would say. Understand that you may not be getting the outcome you want with the big type two fibers. Um, it might be better just to lift some heavy stuff. All right, if you like this video, like it. If you have a comment or question, leave it below. I will put the links to the videos in, or the articles into the um, description of the title of this, uh, this video. And of course, subscribe for more videos on exercise, sports science, nutrition science, a variety of topics in the field. Um, this is one that I get excited about. I think it's, I have a fascination with this uh, size principle motor unit recruitment. Uh, and size principle owner recruitment and how it affects training. So it, it's the foundational part of, of uh, building strength, running faster, jumping higher, and of course, getting bigger. So with that said, I'll continue to work on my horrible winter beard and I will catch you in the next video.